Hey guys, it's Amy. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you're having a wonderful day as always. So today I've got some breaking news regarding the Todd Mullis case. So if you've been to my channel already, Mind Squash, then you know my opinion more or less on how I feel about Todd Mullis and his case and his trial. If you haven't been to my channel already, what are you waiting for? Head on over there. I talk about a lot of the different trials, my opinion, the legalities, and things like that. But uh, I will post the links to the Todd Mullis videos below so you can check those out and get caught up. But today I want to talk to you about some interesting new news regarding Todd Mullis. So if you know anything about the case, you know that he was on trial for the murder of his wife, Amy Mullis, who died due to a corn rake impalements, I guess you would call it. And he was found guilty and will be having his sentencing this month in just a couple weeks. Prior to that sentencing hearing, he is going to be having a ruling on the motion that his attorney had filed for a new trial. And that is a good thing for Todd Mullis. The attorney listed several issues with the trial and why it was unfair. One of them specifically was the 911 call, which the prosecution kind of dropped this bomb at the end of the trial. And told the jury that Todd Mullis was whispering, cheating whore, go to hell cheating whore, and he denied saying that. Now, this is one of those things, again, where you tell people that this is what they should hear, and they're potentially going to hear it. And that was a big deal with the jury members when deciding whether he was guilty or innocent. I don't think this should have been admitted. And whether you believe that Todd Mullis actually killed his wife or not, you have to give him a fair trial, and I just don't think that he got one. So I am pro Todd Mullis for the fact that I think that he should be given another trial with the correct evidence being admitted and with an attorney that's going to actually do a decent job. The interesting new breaking news is that his new attorneys have actually filed a second motion for a new trial, which I did not even know you could do. So now there's a second motion with new reasons why his trial was unfair and he needs a new trial. And this is what he needs. This is perfect for him, really showcases what the problems were. And I talked about this many times in my videos, but we're going to break it down again. So the two issues that they have in this motion for a new trial would be number one, that his attorney did not inform him that he could choose to not testify. Now this could be a throwaway issue. Um, it really depends on the wording that they're trying to use here. If they're saying Todd Mullis is a complete idiot and was not aware that legally he didn't have the obligation to testify, then there's no chance because pretty much everybody knows you don't have to testify at your trial. No one has to testify. As a defendant, you don't have to testify. So unless he felt like he was one of those people that was subpoenaed and had no choice but to get on the stand, it really doesn't make any sense. Not to mention that the judge will ask you repeatedly, is this of your own free will? Have you talked to your lawyer? Have you discussed whether or not you want to testify? Is this, you know, based on your own decision? Blah, blah, blah. They make it very clear that you have the choice not to testify because most defendants really shouldn't testify because they dig their own grave. And I said repeatedly that this attorney didn't give any evidence at all and seemed to really just put Todd Mullis on the stand to defend his own innocence. And that's not what the trial is for. The trial is for the state to prove guilt, not for the defense to prove innocence. You're supposed to go in there with the presumption of innocence. I mean, that's not always easy, but that's the way it's supposed to be. So... If they're going to say that the he obviously knew that he literally didn't have to testify legally, but that the lawyer told him that if he didn't testify, he was going to prison, he had no chance, then that could work. And his lawyer didn't seem to give out any evidence to help him other than putting him on the stand to testify. So that could be a good one. It sounds dumb when you first think of it, but when you really break down the possibilities here, it could make sense. The attorney didn't throw anything out for evidence other than Todd Mullis' own testimony. So it's possible. But number two, this is the one that could save his ass. Number two is that 
His attorney refused to take Todd's testimony and story that this was an accident, that he that there was no murder at all, and that Amy just had a freak accident on the farm. And it's not, I don't even like to call it a freak accident because these accidents happen on farms all the time. There are so many deaths related to crazy farm accidents every day. And I just want to point out that if he wanted to kill his wife and make it look like an accident, there are so many other ways to do that and get away with it other than a corn rake hitting her or her falling on a corn rake. She could, he could have had an accident with um, some of the crazy machinery, which causes many deaths throughout the United States and everywhere else every year. And by the way, OSHA does not even really care about farm incidents. They barely investigate it based on several different regulations with farming. It's crazy. But regardless, they're saying that Todd Mullis has repeatedly said that this was an accident. That's what he said the entire time that he was being investigated. His interrogation was garbage, which is unrelated to this, but he said it was an accident and then was not really given any option to talk. But this attorney decided to agree with the state that this was a murder. Big mistake. From the jump, I've said, why the hell would you say this is a murder? An accident theory is so much more believable than saying that another person went onto their property Mind you, this is a very large land for the farm is a very large area with different buildings and they're in a separate location and she walked, you know, several football fields away. But to say that while they're all on the land, some random person who I would have said is the boyfriend or a boyfriend's spouse, but regardless, um, walked onto the property, went to this shed that she was at, grabbed a corn rake and killed her and got off of there before they all, they found her, less believable than this woman impaling herself on this corn rake because she was dizzy. She just had surgery. The thing was frozen solid with ice, so it was very, very slippery. And this thing could have fallen on her. She could have fallen on it. Something like that. Definitely could have been an accident. I'm sorry, but the accident theory is so much more plausible than saying her boyfriend came and got her while we were all roaming around. Mind you, she did talk to her current affair at the time and texted him and told him what she was going to be doing that day, but she didn't say, I'm going to be going to the red shed to, to get some cat carrier, so you have the option to come and kill me. And that was, you know, one of the things was, he's pissed because she's having an affair. Well, she's had several affairs. He's known about it. The whole town knows about it. He hasn't left her yet. He hasn't killed her yet, but this one is the one that sends him into overdrive and he's like, that's it. I'm officially going to take this bitch out now that she's had her 10th affair on me. I mean, I would have stressed that a little bit more. And the defense attorney didn't do his job. So that could really help Todd Mullis get a, a new trial. His trial let in so much evidence that should not have been let in. I don't know what this judge was doing. I know that the same judge is going to be handling this hearing, which I think is not okay. So I'm going to check that and maybe it's been changed since then. But there are several ways that would cause for there to be a reason for a new trial. One of them is ineffective counsel, which is really the biggest one that usually brings about a new trial and is the biggest reason for this case to get a new trial. The attorney did not do much of a job at all. He didn't have any witnesses really. He didn't, as we're hearing with the new trial motion, he didn't accept Todd Melissa's story that this was probably an accident and went with a murder case. Big mistake there, I think, and I've said from the beginning. When he said that it was a murder, he didn't bring up any other suspects. Juries need to know the suspect. It's not legally necessary to prove the M's, the manner, the means, and the motive, but it's kind of necessary to explain things in a juror's mind. Also, the big S, the suspect. We need a suspect. If you're going to say that the defendant isn't the one who did it, you got to have someone else to fall back on to make the theory more plausible. And this attorney 
just didn't do that. And also, in keeping with the issue with the attorney, if he didn't make it clear to Todd Mullis that he did not have to testify to save his own ass, that's also an issue with the, the attorney's ability to provide adequate counsel. So there was a lot of issues with the attorney. So check one on that one. That's a good reason for a new trial. Another issue is prosecutorial misconduct. There are several ways that this could go, and I don't think that very often we get a lot of prosecutorial issues, but in this case, I think they brought in some evidence that was not okay to bring in. I'm going to specifically go with the one obvious one, which is the 911 call. At the very end of the trial, at the very end of Todd Melissa's testimony, they brought in this little clip of the 911 call and told the jury that he was saying something very specific, even though it wasn't proven that that was the case. So they told the jury what to hear, and the jury presumably heard it. They listened to it several times without it being cleaned up. It was very difficult to hear, and that's an issue. They said that he was calling his wife a cheating whore, said go to hell cheating whore, while he was supposed to be on 911 giving CPR. Now, I've also said that even if he did say this, it's not proof of a murder. It's not proof that Todd Mullis murdered his wife. She was a cheater, and maybe he did feel that way towards her, but he could have been given CPR while he was yelling at her. Who knows? We That doesn't say, he didn't say, I killed you, go, go to hell now. So that's still not even proof, even if he did it. But yes, prosecutorial misconduct, I would say that that was at least unfair. I don't know if it, it's, it leads to the title of prosecutorial misconduct, but not great. I would give that a check minus. We're almost there. Number three, newly discovered evidence. If the new trial motion is stating that this could have been an accident, I'm going to presume that they're bringing in an expert to explain. So I would consider that to be new evidence or at least a new witness to explain something or explain something away. They're explaining why this is not a murder and why this is an accident. So newly discovered evidence, I'd give that a check as well. If they're bringing in a new expert to, to say that it's an accident and I think they would, then that would be, that would be new. And new evidence of material facts require a new trial in the pursuit of justice. That sort of sounds to me the same as number three, so I'm going to prove to you why this could be an accident rather than a murder. I think the prosecution's main witness, the big thing that, other than the 911 call, was the medical examiner saying that this had to be a murder. The prosecution basically put the evidence on the medical examiner's shoulders to prove that this was a murder. And clearly she did it because even the defense attorney went with it. Her main issue was the four prongs on the rake causing six wounds to Amy Mullis's body and that that had to be a murder. And also that she had other injuries to her body. I completely disagreed with the medical examiner's theory that this had to be a murder and refused to admit that there was any chance of an accident. So let's start off by talking about the wound location and depth. So the wounds were in a very odd position. If you look at Amy Melissa's body, they're oddly placed. So she said that this had to be a murder because if you fall on a rake that has four prongs, you're going to get four puncture wounds. But she clearly had six puncture wounds. Therefore, somebody had to have attacked her with the rake. I actually think that that almost gives the appearance more likely to be an accident than to be a murder. Because if you are going to murder somebody in the manner that the prosecution said, which was that Todd Mullis told Amy to go to the shed to get a carrier and then snuck up behind her while she was there and killed her by impaling her with this rake, then it would mean that he would have wanted to have a sneak attack and being behind her without her knowing about it, the first hit, you would want to be the hit that killed her. The person doing this would presumably have taken that rake and while he was sneaking up from behind her, he would have clearly impaled her with that rake very hard. 
he would have swung very hard and there would have been four holes going deep into her body and staying there. However, there were the six wounds and four of them did impale her, but two of them did not go very deep and they were in an awkward, diagonal, funky positioning. So being that he obviously took the rake out of her, if you believe that that's the case, that would mean that the last four wounds were the second hit to her body. So that would mean that the first two wounds that were very small and very um, diagonally placed and oddly placed, that would mean that he would have come up behind her and instead of whacking her very hard from behind in a you know good positioning, he would have hit her in a weird direction, sideways kind of, and just tapped her enough to cause slight injury. And then when she knows that he's now attacking her, that's when he gets the good hit that goes pretty well into her back in a pretty straightforward motion. That doesn't seem as logical. Whereas if it was an accident, it makes sense that say she's walking, she's dizzy, even if she wasn't dizzy, but that's something that was said because she did have surgery. So she's probably not feeling great. So that's very logical to consider. It's icy. If you look at this shed, the shed is frozen. The doors are frozen. So it is slippery. This rake could have been sitting up against the wall or on the ground, but let's say it's sitting up against the wall. She goes in, she kind of loses her balance and slips and she bangs into the rake sideways so that she does get the two puncture wounds that go slightly in and in an awkward position and she feels it and your body's going to react and it's going to pull away from the, the rake. But then she could have then slipped back and it could have fallen on the ground. She could have fallen right on it or she could have fallen right into it and then fell on the ground. Say she say it's on the, on the wall. She falls back against it again as she slips very badly and just flings her entire body weight into the wall, into the rake. The rake impales her and then she goes to the ground and now she's stumbling, getting, she's crawling on her hands and knees. She's flailing around while she's losing the ability to breathe and move. And she's crawling up against the wall, banging her face into the wall, which would get the, the marks on her hands, her knees, her face. Also, if she were to fall onto the rake on the ground and lift herself off and then her body weight falls back on it fully, impales her, and then she spins around and continues on crawling until she falls and, you know, passes out up against the wall. It's more plausible than being attacked from behind, getting a little tap, letting her spin around and start fighting you, and then impaling her in the back. Why is, how are you able to impale her from the back when she's fighting you? I mean, yeah, she could be on the ground. So that's a possibility, but we have to consider plausibility here. And yes, it's plausible that this was an accident. And I really just picture this woman banging into this rake, getting stabbed with the two prongs, having the rake fall to the ground and then her falling onto it or something to that effect. She could have also had, it could have been laying on the ground to begin with. She could have lost her balance, fallen slightly on it, pulled herself up, and then was unable to, you know, keep straight and ended up impaling herself by putting her entire body weight back down onto this rake. Then rolling over with this rake impaled in her back and trying to crawl across to get help. Regardless of how this happened, it could have happened. The accident theory is plausible. And the fact that the medical examiner said it has to be a murder because of the position, the location, the angle, and the depth of these wounds, I think is almost backwards. I think it's at least possible for there to be an accident. And just given the idea that it could be an accident allows for reasonable doubt. All the jury has to do is consider that there's the potential for an accident and they can't really consider him a murderer because there's that second option that nobody murdered her. So 
I think if there were a new trial with an expert saying this was an accident or could have been an accident is really a good shot at having him be acquitted of murder. And you have to consider the timing of this. I've discussed this as well. You know, they they discussed with Tristan, the, the son that was also with Todd for the majority of that day, and asked him how many times and how how long of a time period he was away from his father to allow for his father to have committed this crime. And it was a very short amount of time. Also, they talked about how it took an hour for them to find the body, but they were working. Consider the time frame needed to have killed her. It's not an hour and it's not a half an hour. It's not two hours. It's not any of that long time frame. When she left the barn, supposedly going to get the cat carrier, if we are to believe what Tristan says and what Todd says, but just, just believing Tristan the son, we have to believe that she would have had to have been followed by Todd pretty immediately after leaving for this to be plausible. You have to consider that there's only the time frame from her leaving the barn, going to the shed, the amount of time to grab the cat carrier, that's the amount of time he would have had to kill her. So he would have had to have followed behind her shortly after, shortly after she left to make this a plausible situation of murder, which would have been, I, I'd give it 10, 15 minutes, 15 minutes probably tops to, to follow after her and corner her when she's still by the shed. So the timing does not fit with a murder but it fits with an accident because she could have walked over there. She could have accidentally fallen on this rake. She should, she could have crawled and gotten, and then ended up passing out by the wall. And then an hour later, when they realized that the cat carrier was not at the house where she was supposed to put it, then Tristan went to go see what, what had happened. And he wasn't, again, that's another thing. You're sending your son off to check on the dead body, assuming that she's there. That's not necessarily the case. That's my dog. That's not necessarily the case. They assume the cat carrier would be there. So he's going to check on the situation. What does he find? He finds that his mother never got the cat carrier because she was impaled by this rake. So he pulled the rake out of her body. That was a big issue because they said that any logical person would know that you pull an instrument out of a person's body, it's going to cause death quicker because they're going to bleed out. How does he necessarily think this? You're frantic. I got to say, there are a lot of cases where people do pull a knife out of a person to try to save them. You're not thinking logically and you just want to help them. And he was trying to get this woman to the hospital. Whether or not that's the best idea, which it isn't, you should have called 911 and got them there, but you don't know how you would react to something like that. So I don't think that's evidence of a murder. I think it's very plausible that he was trying to get her to the hospital. He had to take the rake out to get her out of the shed because of the narrow area of it, which also the narrow walking space makes it even more plausible for this to have been an accident. It really does. And the 911 call that a lot of people were saying that he said he sounded, he was excited. He was using the word excited. Excitability also means he's frantic. He's freaking out, you know, and the 911 call, he sounded freaked out. I've said this many times. He sounded freaked out. He was saying he'll do anything to save her. What is he supposed to do? What does he have to do? He's trying to get her to the hospital. He didn't even think to call 911 until he was in the car because he wanted to save her. He was just thinking and, and doing. He was just doing. That was another issue. The prosecution has such a problem with that he's a doer. They didn't like that he said he's a doer. So he was bringing her to the hospital instead of doing what he should have done. Well, in a frantic, crazy moment like that, when you're terrified that you're going to lose someone you love or whatever the case may be, you just react. People react differently. Some people are laughing, crying, yelling, silent. Everybody has a different way of behaving and you never know. So I don't think that was a good reason to be considered a, a murderer. And one more issue I want to bring up is that people said that Amy was clearly afraid of Todd, which makes it very likely that he could have murdered her. Because she was cheating on him and he was pissed off and she was telling everybody that if he found out she was cheating, he was going to kill her. Well, let's think about this really. 
Was she really that scared? She continued to cheat. She continued to cheat regularly in the open, in public. I mean, she was going to a town fair or state fair where friends and family and anybody could have seen her with the boyfriend. And she didn't care enough to be that scared that she wouldn't do something like that. And she cheated on him many times. And this is the time that he decides he's going to kill her. This is when she decides she's terrified. Was she terrified when she had other affairs? Obviously not so much. And he didn't kill her for those. So this time she's obviously terrified that he's going to kill her. It makes no sense. The only thing I can say that makes the most sense with regard to him having a reason to kill her was because he was pissed and he didn't want her to be able to get half of his farm and half of his money and all that stuff when he decided when she decided to leave him for her boyfriend which supposedly was in the works but let's be honest it wasn't in the works that man was not leaving his wife that man didn't really give a shit about her if you look at the text messages he was she was saying how she loves him and all this stuff and he was like gotta go don't give a shit about you i mean if she really thought she was going to go live with him uh eh, she might have been gullible to think that but it didn't look very likely. And even Jerry Frazier, the guy she was cheating with, when he was testifying, he even said Todd called him and asked him about this affair. And he felt pretty good that Todd believed him when he denied it. They thought that he w believed that there was no affair going on. Whether or not he knew or didn't, I don't know. But the main issue here is whether it could have been something other than a murder. And if they bring up an expert that says this could have accidentally happened, and I think they can do that, that's going to put doubt in people's minds. And I think there is doubt. That's why there's so many people that believe in this man and think that he was wrongfully accused. Whether he was wrongfully accused or not, whether he actually did kill someone or not, I'm not judging necessarily, but I am saying that his trial was unfair. The prosecution brought up things that they shouldn't have been allowed to bring up. They shouldn't have had that 911 call unless it was cleaned up. It sounds to me, based on the, the first motion, that they have cleaned it up and are sticking to the story that it was definitely not those words that were said. And they're talking about this first lawyer not doing his job, which absolutely I agree with. And now they're saying that he always thought it was an accident and was kind of convinced to go against that thought. And now they're going to say it's an accident, which is very wise. And also just letting him testify to save himself. I think his testimony actually went fairly well, but lacked emotion. And that may have caused some problems, but being put on the spot about the 911 call, which he, he managed to answer pretty okay, but the fact that he had no emotion probably caused some problems with the jury. If he thought that he had to testify to save himself, that's another issue that could cause a new trial. So let's just recap. What are our reasons for the possibility of a new trial? Well, we know that they are saying that it could have been an accident now, which is a good thing. It's a good um, reason for doubt there. They're saying that the lawyer kind of forced him into testifying. I think they probably made it seem like it was his only chance. That's not great. So that's good for Todd for a new trial. And the fact that the lawyer didn't really do much of a job at all, didn't defend him. He really didn't defend him at all. It was ridiculous. They didn't really prove that he killed her. And the 911 call shouldn't have been admitted. And now they're arguing that that was just a a big blow up that caused the jury to think one direction and that was it. I think they've got a great chance for a new trial. It's coming up soon. It's March. It's coming up this month and we'll find out. So that's going to be a really long five minutes of his life because he's either going to be getting another chance to live his life again or he's going to be losing his life altogether. So we'll see what happens. But this new motion this motion uh, for a new trial, the second time by his new attorneys that sound like they might know what they're doing, this one might do it for him. I need to look into this further because I've never heard of a second motion for the same ruling being done. I imagine they take both of them into consideration because they do have two different reasons for a new trial. 
So I imagine they're going to look at both of them. But it's weird. Uh, it's weird that they are having more than one um, document to look at. I imagine they're going to look at both of them. But for all I know, the first one goes out the window and the second one stands. I'm going to have to look into that further. If you guys know, let me know. In the meantime, check out the links below for my other videos on Todd Mullis. And check Mind Squash, my channel. And check out some other videos that I have about some other trials and whatnot. And let me know what you think, comment, subscribe, please subscribe. I love for you guys to check out my videos and like and share those suckers to your friends. Let me know what you would like to hear more about and I will get right on that. You can comment below or you can email me, mindsquashers at gmail.com. All right, until then, uh, have a great day and I'll see you later. Thanks a lot, guys. Bye. Thank you.